Hello, thanks for joining us. Well, it's one of Guam's problematic agencies. Jonah Gancharfra sits down with the new executive manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority, who's hoping for better days ahead. Taking the helm at Guam Regional Transit Authority is Sel Babauta. Babauta comes in with a wealth of knowledge that he hopes will bring GRTA to what it needs to be. I have an undergraduate degree in um, transportation and traffic management, and I've been in charge of um, some um, vehicle fleet to include buses uh, during my time in the United States Air Force, and I was also the um, transportation operations specialist for the Department of Defense Coast at um, Yongsan Army Base in Korea. Babalta says he would like to see GRTA be the impetus, a big force in Guam's economic growth and improve the quality of life. By having a good uh, transportation system or transit system, we hope to, to allow uh, people to make their appointments on time. Uh, we'll be able to support the less fortunate people of Guam, the Matamku and people with disabilities. And we hope to afford uh, our um, workers of Guam uh, uh, transportation system. He's aware that GRTA has some big challenges ahead. One of those challenges being their depleting fleet of buses and vans. The agency went out and bought buses and started utilizing those buses and vans in 2017. Unfortunately, there wasn't any um, maintenance plans. So as a result of that, <clears throat> many of those buses are, are in uh, repair status, they're out of commission, and we're hoping to bring these buses and vans back to uh, uh, commission so that we'll be able to maximize them and uh, make our um, transit system reliable, safe, and efficient. He's currently working with his staff on formulating a standard operating procedure to make sure non-appropriated funds and bus fares are accounted for. As we reported, it was back in August of last year where auditors found $50,000 in undeposited bus fares, no accounting system of funds, and a lack of basic controls to address risks. We um, are the ones who are um, um, making sure the, that the uh, amount of monies that are being collected are, um, are accurate, and we want to make sure that um, these funds are, are deposited in the bank by GRTA employees and that we'll make sure that receipts from the time we collect the funds to the time funds are deposited in the bank are maintained and, and controlled. His priority list for his first 100 days as executive manager includes utilizing the federal funds that's been allotted to GRTA by the Federal Transit Agency. There's approximately $3.6 million that remain unspent. So we're going to be meeting with GSA to to expedite the procurement of the um, one coal, one stop uh, transportation system. Babalta remains optimistic and determined. I want to assure the people of Guam that um, we are focused, we are going to work hard, and we are going to um, be diligent in our ability to provide um, a good transit system for Guam. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfras. About to says GRTA plans on holding public forums to gather feedback as well as share with bus riders and potential bus riders ways they can take advantage of Guam's transit system. The 20th anniversary of the Santo Nino celebration was observed recently at the Cathedral Basilica, the event featuring a visiting group of eight bishops and a cardinal from the Philippines who joined Archbishop Michael Burns in celebrating the special mass. Nessa the Canto reports. The annual event organized by members of Guam's Cebuano and Aklan associations is highlighted by a mass in which the Santo Nino statues are blessed, a procession and fiesta. Leading the visiting group was Orlando Cardinal Cavedo of Cotabato Province and Archbishop Jose Palma of Cebu. Archbishop Palma says Guam holds special significance for Cebuanos because it was in Tumon that St. Pedro Calungsud of Cebu was martyred along with Blessed Diego de San Vitoris. It's always a, a privilege to be able to walk in the, in the land where the saints have, have offered their life as a testimony to faith. It's like saying you know, by stepping on the, on the land where they have uh, trod before, it makes their memory more alive you know, and it makes us aware how precious uh, faith is to the extent that they're willing, you know, to, to come over, to spread the faith, and 
because of circumstances also to, to offer their life. San Pedro Calungsud and Blessed Diego de San Vitoris were slain by Chamorro Chief Matapang after baptizing his child. As Guam was the site of the martyrdom, the late Ricardo Cardinal Vidal of Cebu worked closely with the Archdiocese of Hagatnya in seeking the canonization of San Pedro Calungsud. It's a blessing because we need people who are models of faith as well as, you know, people to whom we can pray for and whom we, for us can become inspirations in our journey through life. And we feel in many ways mother, you know, to Guam because we know uh, once upon a time Guam was, a, you know, part of the Cebu local church. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Although FEMA individual assistance for Typhoon Mankud was denied, the U.S. SBA is offering low-interest federal disaster loans to Guam businesses, nonprofit organizations, homeowners, and renters. As of January 23rd, 62 home applications have been received, with 22 of those loans approved. Eight business applications were submitted, and two have been approved. In all, a little over $1.5 million has been approved by SBA. As a reminder, the application filing deadline for physical damage, February 5th, and for economic injury, September 9th. The Chamber Business Women's Network, which is a program of the Chamber that brings women professionals together to enhance personal and professional growth, will be hosting a job fair February. Guam Chamber of Commerce President Catherine Castro says with every year, more and more people become involved on both employer side and job seekers. We have over 20 employers all in one room. And the opportunity is there to meet one-on-one -on -one with the employers. This is a great environment to do that. It's not, uh, it's very informal. On February 8th, that's a Friday at the Hyde Regency Guam's Grand Ballroom from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Make sure to bring your resume and your best self. One Guam girl is making her mark on Broadway, playing one of Disney's favorite princesses. Joan catches up with actress Heather Manley. When we last checked in with former Guam resident Heather Manley back in 2016, she was just starting her stint in Australia as part of the ensemble cast for the musical production of Aladdin. It was a whirlwind. Um, that, that was my first huge commercial production musical that I got to be a part of. And seeing something of that grandeur, you know, being put on stage is incredible. The incredible production had runs in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and concluded in Perth where she had previously attended and graduated from the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts. She says it was one of the greatest experiences of a lifetime. And speaking of great experiences, Heather is now in the Big Apple. Right now, I am currently in Aladdin on Broadway, which is nuts. Like, it still, it still hasn't hit me when I say that. Like, the fact, I know that being on Broadway has always been like, you know, that's the goal. With her work visa ending in Australia, she knew she would have to make her way to either Los Angeles or New York to pursue theater and performing arts. So in July of last year, she sent an email to the Associate Director of Aladdin Worldwide, expressing interest for either the Broadway production or the North American tour. Sometime in October, two weeks before her contract was set to expire, Heather received an email. The subject read, Temporary Broadway Opening. It said, hey, what are you doing after October? We're curious. Um, and I was like, after October, I'm free as a bird, why? <laughs> and they were like, well, there's this temporary opening in Aladdin on Broadway um, with the Jasmine understudy. Would you be interested in auditioning? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, like, <laughs> absolutely, of course. She ended up recording her audition piece on her iPhone and sent it to the director. A few weeks later, Heather got another email with the wonderful news. Congratulations, you um, on uh, being a part of the Broadway company. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I looked at my phone and I was like, this is not happening. This, this is crazy. She attributes her success to her parents, Yoji's Dr. Randall Johnson and Terry Knapp from Skip, whom she credits much of what she's learned. I really grew as a dancer and a performer with Skip and the opportunities that she gave me bringing LA talent and all you know talent all over the world to teach us it really it really made us a great dance company you know we grew a lot and we got to learn a lot although her stint with Aladdin ends in a few weeks Heather has been pounding the pavement in hopes for that next big role uh, I've officially moved to New York and um, I've signed with an agent here 
and they've been putting me up for auditions and so now um, I've just been auditioning for things hoping that I'll book something else. So now as an actor, every job only has a certain amount of time, it's, in, you know, it's all contractual so you know, sometimes it could be a couple months, sometimes it could be you know, two years. So now I just have to wait to see what the next thing is but I'm not worried. I know that whatever's meant to come my way will. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharpis. Stay tuned. Next on Weekend Edition, we'll take a look at what stories were trending this week on our social media platforms. Keep it here. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. value relationships because when we commit I love you God, until you're 80 until you're 90 until you're 100 forever we are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships we never stop caring Calvo's select care health care that is always there for you Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Start something new this year when you buy a new Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram from Cars Plus and Mighty. Like a new Jeep Compass Sport, 175 for paycheck. Or a new Chrysler Pacifica LX, 213 for paycheck. Or save $10,500 on a new Ram 1500. How about a new Jeep Wrangler Sport, only 309 for paycheck. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value card with every vehicle purchase. So this year, start something new with a new Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram. Only at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Welcome back. Many headlines covered this week caught your eye on either Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, time to take a look at what you had to say. Asha? Hi, everyone, and welcome to Trend Spotting. Here's what caught your eye on social media this week. The Philippines has been removed from the list of countries eligible to participate in the H-2B foreign worker program. According to a January 18 notice in the Federal Register, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, in consultation with the State Department, determined that the Philippines has a high overstay rate. Now, the loss of temporary skilled Filipino workers could have a dramatic effect not on just the local construction industry, but on the Guam economy as a whole, according to the Guam Contractors Association. The surprise announcement by the Department of Homeland Security to remove the Philippines from the H-2B labor program has the Leon Guerrero administration scrambling to mitigate the impact. Guam has received exemptions in the past, like the recent defense spending bill, which provides easier visa approvals for military-related projects, and that also apparently applies with the new decision. Federal Affairs Committee Chair Senator Regine Bisco Lee calls the removal unfair. She pledged to work with the administration to find a solution. Many of our followers took to Facebook to share their reaction to the H2B news. Stephanie Dickinson writes, They're overstaying, but they're still making a difference and improving the island. I say leave them alone. They work their fingers to the bone and people still complain. If the people that are worried about H-2B visas put as much effort into building up the island community as they do trying to destroy it, this island would become a better place. Juan Borja commented, Sucks for them. I know they need the money, but just because they were the majority doesn't mean we lose all our skilled labor. Robert Kagan Jr. stated, A high rate of these laborers overstay their visas. While I acknowledge their world-class work ethic, they brought this on themselves by abusing our system. And finally, Carl Johnston commented, Well, hopefully this will help the Chamorro people find jobs and maybe GovGuam could step up their game and give some efforts to get young people into trade schools. Roughly 6 to 8 million is what it's going to cost to cover the treatment for about 100 inmates at the Department of Corrections with Hepatitis C. 
The CDC reports that most people become infected with HCV by sharing needles or other equipment to inject drugs and that there is currently no vaccine for hepatitis C. Dr. Larry Lazama, who provides chronic care at DOC, is hoping newly elected leaders find resources to help these inmates and prevent further spread of the viral infection at the prison. Here's what some are saying online. Mickey underscore Tenorio states that money could go to something better, which had Instagram user Kells Charles first reply, before commenting such a thing, remember that we are all human first. I mean, do you really suggest that they should be left untreated? And Goodell4788 stated his solution for any further spread of the virus. Well, they're already in prison. Only way to stop the spread is isolating the infected. Freshman Republican Senator Jim Moylan has introduced a rules resolution, which if passed, would mean legislative employees and senators would have to take drug tests and Bill 26, which would mandate drug testing for elected and appointed officials. In a release, Senator Moylan says he is, quote, declaring war on drugs, end quote, noting the legislature is one GovGuam entity that does not require drug testing for employment. Moylan's Rules Resolution 16 must still be debated and voted on by senators in the 35th Guam legislature, and his Bill 26 would require drug testing for elected and appointed officials, including members of board and commissions. Moylan said, quote, We must set the bar high on tackling the drug problem. Problem, end quote. The freshman senator also said he'd be willing to take a drug test, several wanting to raise the stakes even more. Leanne Flores writes, There are ways to get around a drug test with urine, of course, unless caught off guard. Take it further and do a hair follicle test on all government workers. Joshua R. Mangan commented, Drug test everyone working for the government. Melvin Duenas added, Can you extend that to include all DOE teachers and personnel every six months? Then there's some who want to include more than drug testing. Kelly Bell writes, I think all government employees should be subject to random drug tests and any time a supervisor suspects the possibility of being impaired. Alcohol as well. But there are a few naysayers. Take a look at what Mike Rosansky commented. People are going to disagree with me, but I say no. Why, you ask? Well, let's break it down. So GovGuam has, let's say, 5,000 employees times $25 times 12 months equals $1.5 million a year, which could go to schools, the hospitals, police, and fire. So I'd rather have that money go there instead of drug testing. The government doesn't have the money to be thrown away like this. So I say no to drug testing. He includes, I do not work for Gov Guam. Peter Guerrero also makes a point stating, might lose half of the employees. Thanks for joining us. Catch us next week for more trend spotting. Thanks, Asha. Well, Jason's next with your Crime Stoppers report. Advances in technique and medications used to prevent dental pain have shattered the myth that a dental visit is something to fear, even the dreaded root canal or wisdom tooth extraction. Swabbing or spraying a topical numbing agent on before the injection and using different techniques and anesthetics can create a relatively comfortable or pain-free injection. Injections are often the most feared procedure. Some patients don't like the sounds or the vibrations of decay removal. If you're still nervous or you gag easy, Despite these techniques, very safe oral medicines can be taken before your dental appointment to eliminate all fears or some clinics use nitrous oxide gas. Pain relievers can easily be prescribed to eliminate mild to severe dental discomfort after any visit. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. There is no place on Guam like Chuck E. Cheese's. It's tons of fun with so many games. And parties are a blast, where everyone has fun. Come and party at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Call and book your party today. All right, everybody, Hafadeh, welcome back. The Sarge is in studio. He's on the couch, Sergeant Paltapau with Guam Crime Stoppers. Hafadeh? Hey, Hafadeh. Right, good to see you. Now, 
in your role as Guam Crime Stoppers, you go all over the island, you talk to organizations, you talk to nonprofits, mm -hmm. you talk to, you know, even church groups and everything like that. But one type of organization you spend a lot of time on is schools. Yes. And uh, there is a big problem, apparently, with um, schools and different types of crimes within the campuses and everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm really glad that we're hitting, um, you know, the topic of the schools and school safety in particular, because, you know, um, with the Guam Police Department and the uh, Department of Education, we're, we're actually fostering a partnership in how we can actually work, uh, coexist and actually work together in, in bringing this, the, the concept of safety within the school. But aside from that, with the, with the Guam Crime Stoppers program, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to be embedded in the school, being that the Guam Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit organization. And our main focus is reaching the kids. And lately, we've been seeing a great uptick in, 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 a, in a, a campus crime, such as the school break-ins, uh, such as uh, theft, graffiti, uh, vandalism. And of course, what we're seeing now is the um, illicit drugs being brought into campus. And we want to stress this, that you know, this is a program where students can safely report information about crimes that they know of that are being committed uh, within the school or within the community. And, and not worry about any retribution. And we're seeing the dividends being paid back in the end because right now uh, our focus is on two different cases that are happening um, at the high school level and one at the middle school level. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you about, Sarge, because like most students are gonna say, you know, the ones that are probably harboring some, like some mm -hmm. motivation, they're like, well, you know, I may be a freshman, you know, I just started going to the school. I don't really have a sense of ownership about this as my school yet, but do I have to be an upperclassman to be able to report something? Do I have to be like an officer in student government or, is my voice as equal as everybody else's just because I go to school here? Man, you're spot on, man. Um, you know, talking to some of the kids and everything, that's, that's exactly where I highlight about you being a student of that school, you taking ownership of that school. The stewardship is really what I bring out with the School Crime Stoppers program. And you don't have to be an NHS or NJHS. You don't have to be mm. a member of the student council. All you have to be is identify yourself as a student of that, take ownership of the school, and understand that the abilities that are given to you and, 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 and how you can actually protect your school by sa safely reporting instance of a crime to the Guam Crime Stoppers. Now, you're not going um, you know, to speak to a teacher or speak to a counselor or a principal. You're just providing that information. And this is where now we're asking the students from within the schools to help us because we're making great stride with our, with our school efforts with the School Crime Stoppers program. Do students even have to say who they are? Can I just say, no. I'm, a, I'm a student at, you know, just say randomly at Ogden Johnston, and I'd like to Yeah, absolutely, out absolutely. Okay. absolutely. And that's, okay. what, that's what we ask. You know, we practice full anonymity. And, um, you know, we ask the students, you utilize this opportunity to bring change or to be the voice of change. And you don't need to tell people that, hey, you know, I did it this way. I went to the Crime Stoppers. It really is you having that sense of ownership, having that sense of stewardship with the school. And, you know, last week we talked about um, the school break-in that happened at Simon Sanchez. And I just want to report um, prior to that in September, we had the same incident and it was a Crime Stoppers tip that led to the um, apprehension of individuals that were responsible for that. And we're going to continue to ask the students and, you know, if you have an opportunity, go back, you know, look it up on Facebook or YouTube and, you know, come back into the segment where we talked about this set of uh, uh, incident that happened at Simon Sanchez. But, you know, nonetheless, high school, middle school, even elementary, each student has the opportunity to bring change. Each student should start taking that sense of responsibility and a sense of ownership to see the program work and to give yourself that safe learning environment. And this is pertinent because this week's Crime of the Week deals with just that. It actually deals with a robbery, but we want to showcase how we captured this case, uh, you know, and how we connect the cases with the Crime Stoppers, with the general community. All right, well, the system works, everybody, and it only works if you get involved, so here is the information that you need to know. On Monday, January 14th, at around 4 in the morning, officers assigned to the Tumon Precinct Command responded to the Garden Villa Hotel in Tumon in reference to an armed robbery that occurred. Now, the preliminary investigation suggests that shortly before 4 a.m., two men, one armed with a rifle, entered the lobby area of the hotel. As an armed male stood watch, the other male suspect jumped over the counter pulled the cash box from the register in which both suspects fled out the lobby area. Surveillance footage depicted the suspects fleeing the hotel parking lot in a black Ford F-150 pickup. The suspects were described as suspect number one, male armed with a rifle, was seen wearing a black mask, an orange shirt, and black pants. The unarmed suspect was seen wearing a red hat with his face wrapped with a red cloth, a red shirt, and black pants. Now the Guam Crime Stoppers is reaching out to the community for their assistance relative to this armed robbery complaint. If you have any information about this case, 
please call the Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HEOP or text 688-STOP. You can also visit our webpage at www.guam.crimestoppersweb.com or call the Guam Police Department at 475-8615-6 or 7. Guam Crime Stoppers wants to remind the public that we do not use caller ID and you do not have to leave your name. You can receive a cash reward of up to $1,000 if the information provided leads to the arrest and conviction for the person or persons responsible for this crime or any other crime. Okay, Sarge, I appreciate the information as always. Um, just to close, again, you don't have to be some sort of leadership structure mm -hmm. within your school if you want to speak out, but if students would like to do something like I want to organize like a Crime Stoppers group where we're constantly looking out for something like that or, you know, they're spreading the word about mm -hmm. how to get in touch with you guys or, you know, um, feed information and everything. How, how can they do that at the school level or, or like, a, like a student group? Uh, it, it's happening now, you know, as we mm. speak. We, we have schools that actually started a Youth Crime Watch program. We have middle schools that are adopting a peer mentorship program. Outstanding. Where, where the peers actually take in, take in the, the curriculum of the School Crime Stoppers program and they help spread the word. And we're starting to see the effects and how it really trickles down into the student population versus us as adults, us in the leadership role telling them, you should do it this way, this is what is expected from you. But when we focus on the peers, when we focus on the actual student body, um, you know, we're working with, with, with various schools, C.L. Titan Elementary School, Finnegan's and Elementary School, um, Antelon Middle School, in developing a Youth Crime Watch program that's already existing. Um, Antelon uses a peer mediation type approach. And, you know, you can get involved. Reach out to your teachers, reach out to your advisors or your counselors and ask how you can actually engage in, 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 in different programs that can keep your school safe. All right, good to go. Thanks as always, Sarge. Hey, I appreciate it. And, you know, again, the students that are out there, please do your part and just help us keep our school safe. All right, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. All right, everybody, please stay tuned. We're back after this. Start something new this year when you buy a new Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram from Cars Plus and Mighty. Like a new Jeep Compass Sport, $175 for paycheck. Or a new Chrysler Pacifica LX, $213 for paycheck. Or save $10,500 on a new Ram 1500. How about a new Jeep Wrangler Sport, only $309 for paycheck. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value card with every vehicle purchase. So this year,